I don't understand why I am required to accompany you on this. Mostly because you were rather clear in your desire to experiment on other oh my students. God. Okay, so <laughs> I thought <laughs> I thought uh, that this was her outfit, right? Because like these colors are similar. I thought this was her outfit melting. Like at first I was like, what is happening? Oh, that's a horse. I am not a student anymore, I'm a graduate. The other in that sentence is incorrect. That is what concerns you? Do not trouble yourself, Zachariah. Right? As long Melt. as Mr. Warlock is with us, there is no risk of him misbehaving. I'm not misbehaving. This would hardly be the first time I've conducted such experiments. Uh, yes, Hector. we know. Those experiments were never sanctioned either. Not to mention that Mr. Warlock would require quite the number of mages to replicate a pairing ritual. Even if you had some of the most powerful mages to have ever attended, you would not have the power to simulate the yearly pairing ritual. There is a reason that we only perform it on an annual basis. We lack unpaired students who might have wished to participate. And we can't simply offer you students ill-prepared to graduate. Nonsense! I cannot believe the spell is so limited. The requirement is the input of raw power, not number. A pair of mages trained in the task could likely... Zachariah reared her horse and turned it so that she might meet Hector at Glare. Instead, she seemed startled for a moment, finding Hector already locked on her with the eyes of a hound with blooded prey. Zachariah turned away I sharply. I don't care what you think, Mr. Warlock. You do not have permission to conduct your experiments, so for now, you will stay by our side. Ash was surprised to find that she seemed the only one to have registered the look between the two. Even Prude seemed to have her attention elsewhere. I must agree with my wife on this. Zachariah smiled fondly at Luciana. The expression seemed alien on her face. Her own eyes fell on Hector, and she found herself suddenly facing down those same eyes. Blood became needles of ice in her veins. The frost in his glare melted into a warm grin. It had only been a heartbeat, but she still felt it. What had that been? That animosity? There's something wrong with that man. So, what are we hoping to find? Ah, your horse is cute! And doesn't match your outfit, thank God. I believe these two are of a mind that there's a paladin who has been training in secret in a nearby village. That is more or less accurate. I have another question for you, Heck. What is it? Why aren't you riding a horse? <laughs> oh, Heck hates horses. I was wondering that. As long as he can keep up, Hector is welcome to do whatever he pleases. You want to be a soldier, boy? You best learn to ride. An army cannot be expected to wait on your fancies. Hector did not bother to fire a glare at her this time. Instead, he took a deep breath, lowered his gaze, and broke into a hard run. He outpaced the group in moments. Ash felt her jaw drop, but was quick to clench it shut. He was fast. Hmm. What is his deal with horses? Oh, I don't know. He just mentioned it to me while the handlers were preparing Arcturus. That boy has been afraid of horses since the day he arrived. Horses like him about as much. There's something to be said of a man who cannot earn the trust of a horse. Ash did not disagree. Ah. Huh. 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 Uh. Huh. Alright, do we want to go into town? Or stay with the heads and prude? Uh... I'm gonna go into town! Ash flicked her reins, her horse neatly shifting into a harsh gallop. She followed Hector as he continued his brisk pace toward the village, leaving the rest of their group far behind. How was a man on foot outpacing a horse? Zechariah was right. Something was weird about that guy. The ride to the village was brief, and Hector was already busy speaking with the villagers. I am sorry to hear about your loss. Thank you for your information. Did you find something? Hmm? Oh, hello, Ash. Well? Maybe. Apparently an old man died the night of the ritual. His son was a mage. A full mage, so don't get your hopes up there. If there is anyone in this village who may know anything, it will be him. What in the shadows is a tiny village like this doing with a mage? Huh? It doesn't seem odd to you that a village as small as this one would warrant a full mage? I mean, I would understand a hedge mage. Perhaps a student who failed their exams. I believe the mage in question is merely visiting. 
The man who died was the father and had been ill for some time. Oh. Hector looked into the distance. <laughs> Hector looked into the distance. They could barely make out the approach of Prude in the heads. Hmm. Let's go. I'd like to look into this more before they get here. Okay, but why? Hector did not give an answer as he marched toward a cottage in the distance. With a grimace, Ash followed. You really need to work on your conversational skills. Huh? I was referring to how you just ignored my question. You asked a question? I'm sorry, I must have been lost in thought. Apparently. Hector gave no response. What exactly is on your mind? Worst case scenarios. A chill seeped down the length of her spine. Perhaps keeping your thoughts to yourself is for the best, then. As they arrived at the cottage, Ash was surprised at its condition. The soil surrounding the mountain was exceptionally rich for farmland, and the presence of the mountain itself provided the region a degree of stability most could not afford. She would not be surprised to find a fine cottage. This place was not fine. It was lavish. Wow. A little more than I expected. The sun... Hector paused. Or daughter is inside. I forgot to inquire as to the identity of the mage. He was still ignoring her. As for the appearance, I suspect that their child sends home money. Most mages make a very comfortable siphon. Or maybe not. Hector rapped on the door. Ash heard something from within, and a moment later, the door opened. Can I help you? The man did not have the look of a mage, be they necromancer or paladin. Yes, hello. I would like to ask you about the person your father saw the night he died. Really? Are you serious? Placing a hand on Hector's shoulder before he could speak, Ash pulled him back as she stepped forward. Yes, I'm Ash, a necromancer. This is Hector, of the same profession. Hector opened his mouth to speak once more, but Ash spoke first, forcing her words before his. Hector informed me you were a mage. May I ask of your speciality? We are hoping you might provide something in the way of information about the identity of who we saw. They call me Malte. I'm Malte. no mage, though you wouldn't be the first to make that mistake. My older brother is, though if you're looking for him, he's already gone. My father was a bit delirious when he passed. But that figure in the dark? He was convinced it was death itself coming for him. I don't think death is the type to trip and stumble into the mud, though. I might not have been able to hear them, but the way they thrashed afterwards, you could tell their mouth was foul with curses. Just don't think that's the kind of demeanor death would have. So you <laughs> saw them. <laughs> I like how Malta is coming at this. He's like, look, I figure death is a bit cooler than that, you know? <laughs> like, I think, I feel like death is probably a bit, a bit more put together. Not much more than a cloaked traveler in the night. What color was their cloak? Gray. Why does it matter? Can you give me any more details? I was kind of busy with my father's final throes. No. Ash was a bit shocked with the ease with which the man spoke of both death and his past father. Only his most recent response contained any hint that the conversation may have bothered him. In such case, I will depart. Thank you. Uh, uh I'm going to speak with Malta. Hold on. Merk. Merk. I'm gonna save it. Every choice. <laughs> gonna give me like a million choices now. Ash considered following Hector, but discarded the thought as she turned back to the man. There was something strange about him, and Ash wanted to know his story, particularly his comment about how he might be mistaken for a mage. I'm sorry for the rudeness of my companion. He's socially crippled. Not the first one I've met. Reminds me a lot of the kobolds. <laughs> Nothing ruder to a kobold than an inefficient conversation. Kobolds? Ash genuinely had no idea what the man was talking about. They live a long way off. Months of travel, at least. But they're nothing compared to the yetis of the far mountains, or the harpies of the sea spires, even farther than that. Both are far easier to reach than the swamplands of the kobolds. Ash was now convinced that the man was making jest of her. Oh, but none compared to the oddities of the gnomes. Malta cocked an eyebrow. You've met gnomes? Or maybe he's just mad. Never mind. So your brother is a mage? Yes, he's a paladin. He was with my father, desperately trying to extend his life. Age is a wound beyond the healing of any paladin. And you? I travel, mostly. A light flashed across the man's eyes. But I have a 
bit of magic of my own. Retreating into the depths of the house, the man quickly returned, holding a bottle with a metal rod down the center of the strange liquid swirling within. I present to you, lightning in a bottle. Oh, very nice. Let me answer the question in your head for you. The man reached into the satchel at his side and withdrew a tiny bottle with a metal cap, wiring running through its center. He presented it with the mannerisms of a performer, waving both it and the bottle before her and then touching the cap to the metal rod. Oh, is this going to be like, people think he's a mage because he's actually just a scientist. (laughs) The room suddenly lit with a brilliance that made her immediately question whether he had lied before about being a paladin. Incredible. What type of magic is this? It's science, babe. Just simple electricity. The light bottle is something I had crafted for me by a master glassblower. I developed a number of other uses for bottled lightning, but I find this to be the most impressive. Incredible that this can be done with no magic. You'd be amazed at the things you can do without magic. There was a time when man was without magic. The ruins are such a wonder that I question if we were not better off without it. Please, don't tell me you're one of those who believes in the dawn of magic. I do. I've seen a lot more of the world than most. And some of the things I've seen make me think that maybe we didn't always have magic. Ash rolled this over in her mind. Thank you, Malta. It was a pleasure to meet you, but I should be going. The pleasure was all mine. Take care, Ash. He led her out the door, and Ash made her way to find the heads and prude. You have no business dismissing me so easily. Oh, goodness. Mr. Warlock, if you've found nothing, then we have no reason to search further. You will not remain here unsupervised. I believe Zachariah is correct here. We do not want a repeat of some of your... earlier incidents. Please, this is our first village. We have many more to investigate. What are the chances we would find our answers within the first place we look? You are of course correct. My apologies. The words came out, but his face spoke another story. I assume you would have already interrupted that dispute, should the Rod have found anyone. You are correct. It is only us here. Let us move on. Ash and Prude exchanged glances as they remounted and slowly turned their horses. Prude trotted slowly, allowing Hector time to catch her. Ash turned to watch from ahead of the two. Hey, it's okay. We'll figure this out. Yes, I intend to. My apologies for my outburst, I... I am wearing myself needlessly thin, I think. I am not sure how much longer I can keep this up. Prude's hand fell to his head. He was at just the right height and she stroked his hair. The two smiled at each other. Ash felt chills go down her spine. Something was wrong. She couldn't keep watching this in silence. Ash stripped out of the muddy riding boots and threw a sopping gown to the floor beside them. The rain had come and struck so hard that the small expeditionary expe- yeah, yeah, got it, got it, expeditionary force had been forced to interrupt their hunt. Save for Hector. He had stared out into the expanse, faded gray by the rain, and simply told the four that he would keep looking. That can't be normal. Was he really looking for the other phoenix, or was he working on something else? He had the mark of the spider, after all. Mark interpretation was said to be as accurate as fortune-telling. She could not shake the image of the man standing amidst an enormous web, spinning it with care and patience, ensnaring prudence. Shivers crawled up Ash's spine. Ash needed to talk to her. But first, a shower! The bathing facility at the mountain had shocked Ash when she first arrived. Awe-inspiring contraptions forged of metal and fire, not magic. The devices pumped hot and cold water throughout the depths and heights of the mountain. In ways, they seemed more magical to her than even healing or reanimation. Warm water poured over her with the turn of a knob. Scented soaps combined with a coarse sponge, and Ash found herself clean and free of muck a few minutes later. Toweling off her long black hair, a knock came from the door. Who is it? The door opened and Prudence came in. Her red hair, still wet, fell in crimson tendrils around her shoulders. For once, she wasn't in her armor, wearing instead a simple frock with an unadorned pants underneath. Hector is still out, but I can tell somehow he's fine, and that he will likely be a while. I figured I should come spend some time with you. It's been a while since we did that, and as long as Heck is out, it'll just be the two of us. Oh, I took the liberty of raiding his room. He 
has quite the collection of alcohols. I am entirely unsure how he came about a chocolate mint liquor, but I feel that donating it to our ladies' night would be a noble sacrifice. She smiled at Prude. She couldn't help it, even with everything that had happened, just being around her made Ash happy. And yet the same feeling of joy drove a wedge of ice directly into her heart. She had never really understood the phrase so close and yet so far until now. Oh, I'm not gonna tell her to leave! No way! No way. Food? No food? Hmm. Like I forget something as important as that. I brought some hard cheese and bread. Prudence produced these from a satchel at her a back. Night with just us would be great. I thought so. Prude always knows what's best for Ash. She winked. She found a seat on Ash's bed and produced the bottle as well as a pair of wooden cups. Look, I'm sorry you're in this situation. I don't want to make light of it. I wish there was more I could do. It's not enough that your partner seems to have dedicated his life to finding my pair. Heh. <laughs> I don't think that this is as much about you as you think. I think he doesn't like not understanding the situation. Or at least that's the feeling that I get. Prude gestured at the spider on her hand. Ash slipped into a black nightgown and joined her on the bed, taking a cup as it was offered. To our friendship, surviving what I had imagined to be the only thing that could ever tear us apart. To our... Ash paused, trying to swallow the lump in her throat. Friendship. Ash drained the cup and lowered her gaze to find Prude wincing over her own empty cup. Whoa! Stronger than I expected. Prude filled the cups again. Are you trying to get me drunk? Well, you're far more accommodating when you're drunk, if you know what I mean. Ash stifled a sigh. You mean I'm easier to cheer up. What else would I mean? She said with a wink. Goddess, she really has no clue what she's doing, does she? Your turn for a toast. To my best friend, sticking by me in my darkest hour. The two drank and Prude was quick to top them off again. Oh, Prude, Ash is in love with you. Oh, sweet babies. You are me for the next one. I'll go again. Ash let a moment of silence hang in the air, gathering her will, her heart beating as much in her ears as her chest. To you. Whom I love more than I can ever say. You're sweet. Bottoms up! The two drank, and for a moment Ash leaned closer in toward Prude. The moment passed. Okay, no more shots. Well, you should probably slow it down. Still, Prude filled their cups and smiled. So, what do you think of Hector? I don't want to say. She really didn't. Come on, tell me. I don't like him. There's something wrong with him, Prude. Prude sipped at her drink. I don't know, I kind of like that about him. What? He's different, but not in the kind of way where he's socially crippled. He's not like anyone I've ever met before. That's because you haven't met anyone who's truly psychotic before, Prude. Look, I didn't want to say this before, but I think he's responsible for my mark. What do you mean? I mean, his research. I think he figured out a way to force a pairing. No. No. I think he forced you to pair with him. Ash, I know the situation is upsetting, but you can't blame him for this. Prude, you remember what we swore? We would be together forever. There is nothing I want more than that. I want to be with you. I want us to be together still. Ash. Prude, I love you. Ash, I love you too. No, Prude, I- No, you don't get it, Prude! For a moment, silence hung in the air like a drop of dew, frozen delicately at the end of a blade of grass. Then, the distance between them was gone in a moment, and Ash felt Prude's lips pressed against her own. Her lips tasted like mint and chocolate. Slowly, she pulled away. Prue's eyes were as wide as saucers. Ash, I'm so sorry. Please don't tell me that. No, look, I love you too. There is no one I love more. But I love you as a sister. As my best friend. Ash couldn't find the words. I don't suppose your concerns over Hector are related to jealousy at all? No. 
No, there's something wrong with him. I see it in his eyes. Prude let out a long sigh. Ash couldn't meet her gaze. A moment later, Ash felt Prude warm against her, hugging her tight. Ugh, it's going to be okay, Ash. I won't trust Hector until we can be sure he's worthy of it. A silence fell. Not the sharp, uncomfortable kind, but the warm softness of two people who just need a friend and comfort. Though, now this explains a great deal about your love life. <laughs> don't rub it in, Prude, come on! So, you like girls? I don't know. I've been in love with you so long, I can't imagine loving anyone else. Well, I'm sorry. Don't be. You can't change how you feel. No, I mean, for not noticing it earlier. I'm really bad at this. I'm not much better, or I would have told you earlier. I was just imagining the two of us being paired, and then I would confess. That was going to be the start of our life together. Another silence fell. I am now concerned that my hugging you might be setting mixed signals when you might need some space. It's not like I have anyone else to go to for comfort. I appreciate it. Plus... Part of me must have known it wouldn't work out. Want me to go? No. The words came with a deep pain in her chest. But maybe you should. I'll leave the drink and the food. Eat if you get hungry, okay? And Ash? Yes? I'll always be here for you. Paired or not. Prude squeezed her again, and for a moment the smell of Prude and her wet hair nearly drove Ash to try to kiss her again. Just to try. She was gone a moment later, leaving a lingering warmth on her skin. Ash drained her cup, pulled her blanket around her. She sat in silence, breathing slow and steady as she held back tears. Oh, I bet it's heck! Ash started awake, cup still in hand, the cheese half-eaten but the bread untouched. The bottle was empty. Who, uh, is it? The door did not provide a response, instead swinging open to reveal death itself standing within its frame. The cloaked figure strode toward her, extending an arm, sheaths of water pouring from it. I have it. found something. What? I, uh, I found something. Hector? Yes? Why are you here? I was out visiting the other nearby villages. I was asking about unfamiliar people spotted in the area. I think that an Why are you here now? I thought you might want to know. Ash could feel tears in her eyes. Should I leave? Why didn't you leave before? Why couldn't you have left two years ago? I... If you hadn't been here, she would have been with me. Even if she didn't feel the same way, she wouldn't be leaving me. Hector just stood in silence, the shadow of his hood hiding his expression. Ash simply cried. I'm sorry. The words came so much later, Ash had almost forgotten he was I there. I never intended to take her away from you. Silence was thick in the air, choking away any further words from either party. Somehow, the way he said it only made her more sure he had done something during that ritual. Ash wanted to curl up into herself. I wish there was more I could offer you. The greatest comfort I might provide you is the stupor of a drunken haze, but... I can tell by the empty bottle of my liqueur that I have already provided a degree of assistance on that front. Prue drinks some too. Why was she defending herself? I might assume from your state and... Hector's eyes fell on the spider just below his knuckles. Her own. That you finally confessed. You knew? I lack empathy, not insight. Get out! No. You can't just say no! I can. I just did. <laughs> God damn it, Hector. Get out of my room, now. How will that help? Please, explain it to me. You took her. Hector stood in silence. Let's assume I did. Let's assume, then, that I, in fact, did it purposefully. Did you? What if I say yes? What will you do? We are paired. It cannot be broken now. Hector, uh, then what is this? Ash nearly backhanded the man with the phoenix mark. I don't know. This is what mark she's supposed to have, isn't it? Before you did something to the ritual. No. No? No. It is not. How can you be so sure? Because I know who you are paired to. Ash stepped back. What? 
I spent the entire night hunting for your partner. I am quite sure I have deciphered their identity. Are you familiar with the cult of the- Stop. What? I don't want to hear this right now. Would you prefer sleep? More food? Perhaps more drink? Ash met the gaze of Hector and realized just how entirely unreadable a face he had. Why? Please specify. Why everything? I choose not to attempt humor, so I will try my best to answer your question as I see it. I am still here because I do not have a home to go to. I was a fortunate orphan in being found to have magic. Here I have stature to a degree. To become a hedge mage after this, I would rather suffer any shame than that. Next, why did you not pair with prudence and am I responsible for it? Likely, you're simply not as compatible as you thought. And I'd like to point out that you are in love with her and she does not share the same sexual preferences. As far as your phoenix mark, I am almost entirely sure that is my doing. How? Hector shuffled, and Ash realized she was still dripping wet. How long had he been out during that downpour? I couldn't deal with another year of shame. I developed a method of pouring more power than normal into the ritual. Operating on the theory that one's power is significant in determining one's worthiness towards pairing, I infused the ritual with likely several times over its normal amount of energy. I truly have no idea of the exact specifics of the side effects, but one that I was concerned with was that anyone who may be manipulating the light in any way may have been unintentionally drawn into the ritual, which is why I am concerned that you may have been accidentally paired to a member of the Cult of Grey Mages. No. The cloaked figure was spotted by others. They travel by foot, like me. I was mistaken for the individual until I removed my hood and showed the healthy glow of my eyes. The individual had a lifeless gray. Why would I pair to a monster like that? How could I? I have no answer to the first, but to the second. When they perform the ritual that turns them gray, the mark dissolves. It's the only way I know of to open an individual to a pairing once more. You see, higher. No. Please, stop. The more important question is why one of their number would be here. Goddess, protect me. Hector, shut up. Hector did. Did you really think it was appropriate to dump all this on me now? Can't you see the state I'm in? I... I don't know. I thought understanding might bring you some comfort. I always find that things are easier to process when you understand them. Why do you think I spent so much time trying to understand the ritual? Hector stood once more in silence. <clears throat> As this is not helping, is there anything else I can do to improve your mood? <laughs> oh, what do we want, guys? We want pasta, let's be honest. Ash bit her lip. She knew what would really help, but did she feel comfortable asking him for it? Her stomach rumbled violently at the thought, and she decided she could stomach could you it. you bring me pasta and cheese? I, um, I... Hector stopped to gather himself. Yes, of, of course, Ash. He could not contain a smirk as he retreated through her door. Ash fell back onto her bed. The only sound he made while leaving was dripping water. What if what Hector had said was true? Could she have really paired to a gray mage? The thought sent shivers down her spine. She lay in bed for what seemed an eternity. Are you there? I need your help. Ash jerked up with a start. Huh? Who's there? Silence hung for a moment. Yeah, sure. How are things? Things are fine. I am fine, I think. Something... Something, something happened. happened. Ash looked around, desperately confused. Where were those voices coming from? Who's the girl? Were they talking about her? Girl? The one connected to you, currently listening in. What? Is this not supposed to be a three-way call? I... Spiraling stars! A distinct, fuzzy silence fell. Spiraling stars? What kind of a curse was that? Ash sat back up in her bed. Had she imagined it? No further voices came, and as she lay back, sleep stole consciousness from her long before her mind could grasp any answers. 